Welcome back to video three, validation and verification as part of chapter seven, algorithm design and problem solving. This is for the IGCSE computer science course. We need to understand the need for validation checks to be made on input data and different types of validation checks. And we need to understand the need for verification check um, to be made on input data and different types of verification checks. And these two things, they sound very, very similar. Um, and they're quite easy to get mixed up, but we will go through what the differences are. Validation and verification are both used to ensure that data entered into a computer system is correct and reasonable. The usual definitions are validation ensures that only data that is reasonable is accepted. And verification is used to check that the data does not change as it is being entered. They're both there to check that the information inputted into the computer is correct. So let's have a look at validation first of all. Now validation is the automated checking by a program to ensure that the data entered is sensible and reasonable. If the data is rejected while a computer system is validating, a message should be output explaining why the data was rejected and other opportunities given to enter the data. It does not check the accuracy of the data. Well, what does that mean? Well, we've got a student here um, in secondary school um, and students generally in secondary school are aged between 11 and 16 years old. A computer can be programmed only to accept numbers between 11 and 16. This is known as a range check. However, this does not guarantee that the number typed in is correct. For example, this student here might be 14, but if 11 is entered, it will be valid, but it will be incorrect. So there are different types of validation. I'm gonna go through the list here. First of all, check digit. The last one or two digits in a code are used to check the other digits are correct. Barcode readers in supermarkets use check digits. A format check checks that the data is in the right format. For example, a national insurance number, um, this is in the UK, is in the form of um, two letters and then a series of six numbers. Your Cadiz Fiscali, your driving license, your student identification number, your passport number, will all have a specific format. A length check checks that the data isn't too short or too long, i.e. a password needs to be six letters long or a, a, your PIN number for, your, for the ATM machine needs to be four or five digits long. A lookup table, look up acceptable values in a table. There are only seven possible days of the week, for example, 12 um, months of the year. A presence check checks that the data has been entered into a field. In most databases, a key field cannot be left blank. In the same way, if you are filling in a, um, a form on the internet and it requires you to enter a, pa enter a password or enter your name, then this is checking to see that you have entered that correct data. There's usually a little star on a form to say that this must be, this field must be filled in. A range check checks that the value falls within the specific specified range, i.e. the number of hours worked must be less than 50 and more than zero. And we looked at the example on the previous slide with the student aged between 11 and 16 years old. And of course the spell checking looks up words in dictionaries when word processing. They're all types of um, validation. So let's break some of these apart. Um, range checks. A range check is used to ensure that numbers are only accepted into a program if it falls within a certain acceptable range. And here's an example. If a program asks for someone's age, then you might limit this, these entries to between 13 to 100 years old. This would potentially prevent people under the age of 13 from signing up, and it would also prevent people giving an unrealistic age, e.g. 250 years old. Maybe if you, if you wanted to sign up to Instagram or Facebook, something like this would be useful. Here is some pseudocode that would, um, would fulfill these requirements. So we set the age first of all to zero. Um, we output a message, please enter your age. The age is, is then inputted by the user. While the age is less than 13 or greater than 100, do sorry you are too young, or in this case, if it's over 100, sorry the age enters is invalid um, and if please re-enter your age and then the age is input again so we've got a while loop going on there to make sure somebody enters an age between 13 to 100 years old a presence check 
Um, this is to ensure that some data has been entered and the value has not been left blank. For example, an email address for an online transaction must be completed. And here we've got an example for an internet blog where a person needs to enter their name before they can post a comment. For example, name is blank at the moment. Um, output please enter your name before you post your comment. Name equals input. While the name is blank, do sorry you must enter your name. Name equals input. As soon as a person enters their name, and it could be anything, it could be a fake name, it could be Mickey Mouse, but as soon as they enter their name, it says thank you, the name of the person, your comment has been published. A length check, um, the clue is in the name. The, um, the length check checks that the data contains the exact number of characters. For example, a password must be exactly eight characters in length, so the passwords with seven or fewer characters or nine or more characters would be rejected. Or it might be that the data entered is a reasonable number of characters. For example, a family name, your surname, could be between two and 30 characters inclusive. So that the name with one character or a name with 31 characters would be rejected. And again, we've got some pseudocode. Please enter your password of eight characters and we put a repeat loop in there. Um, input the password. If the password is less than or more than eight, then your password must be at least eight characters until the length of the password is eight characters long. Here I want to talk about format checks and check digits. For a format check, this is used to ensure that the data entered matches the desired pattern. And here you can see an email address, which has the format, um, the first part, maybe the name, the at sign, and then what, what we've got here, Hotmail, Gmail, and then the punto, the dot, and then what it is, .co.uk, .com, .it, .au. This would be an example of an email address with a Gmail account. Okay, so that would be the format check. Another example of a format check would be to check that an ID number that has been entered is in the correct format, i.e. it's got the right amount of maybe letters and the right amount of numbers in the correct place. A check digit is the final digit or the final two digits included in a code. It's usually calculated from all the other digits in the code. There's usually some kind of um, calculation done. Check digits are used for barcodes, um, product codes, ISBN numbers such as this one and VIN numbers, vehicle identification numbers on cars, motorbikes, etc. So here, the last number in the ISBN code is the check digit. Finally, and this is a short video, we're going to look at verification. There are two main methods of verification. First of all, double entry. This is where data must be entered twice, sometimes by different operators. The computer system compares both entries, and if they're different, an error message requesting that the data is entered again. So, for example here, the email address and we need to confirm the email address and the password and the confirmed password. Another example of this might be the, the capture whereby if you're logging into a system to make sure that you're not, you've, to verify that you're not a robot, you need to complete a puzzle or you need to tick a specific box or tick several boxes, maybe pictures of trains or pictures of traffic lights. And then also we've got proofreading data. This method involves somebody actually checking the data entered against the original document. This is usually done by an actual person reading the document and reading through it to make sure it's okay. This is very time consuming and because it's gonna be a person doing it, it is very costly. I just wanna finish off with some exam questions. And I've got an exam question in two parts here for looking at both validation and verification. So three parts of this. State with reasons which validation checks you would use for the following inputs. You may decide that more than one validation check is required and explain why the following input data also needs to be verified. So we've got entering a telephone number, entering a student's name, entering a part number in the form of three letters and three digits when X must be a letter and nine must be a digit. Okay, let's have a look at this then. So, if we take the telephone number first of all, we would include a presence check to make sure somebody's actually entered some data in there. A length check would be useful 
to, to ensure that somebody's entered the right amount of, of numbers. And maybe a format check. If we're doing international numbers, for example, we might want to include the, um, the plus sign or two zeros or two other numbers at the front or the back of the telephone number. The number needs to be the one that is required as well as having the necessary characters. For the student's name, again, we'd use a presence check to ensure the name has been entered. A length check, i.e. between 2 and 30 letters to ensure that the name is a reasonable length. And the name needs to be associated, of course, with that particular student. And finally, a part number. Again, and I think with most data checking, a presence check, again, ensures that something has been entered. A format check to make sure the data matches the character and the number style, i.e. three letters and three numbers. What we must remember with this one, though, is a part number could have the required format, but not before the part intended. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this. It's a short video, but I hope you've got a better insight into what the differences are between validation and verification. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.